In this problem, we have to find the area under the region of this graph. So to find the area under the region, basically all we have to do is integrate this function from 1 to 3. So we go left to right because we're integrating with respect to x. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have the definite integral from 1 to 3 of 1 over, and we have x squared minus 2x plus 5 dx. So what do you do when you have an integral like this? Well, the first thing I do is um, I look at this and try to factor it nicely in my head. If it does factor, you can use something called partial fractions, which we actually haven't uh, learned yet. So it doesn't factor nicely. So the next step is to attempt to complete the square. Um, so let's do that. So we have x squared minus 2x plus 5. So None of these should factor the ones you'll see in this exercise set. Um, most, of, Whenever you have three terms like this, it'll be a completing the square type problem, typically. typically. So to complete the square, you write this again. And what you do is you take this and you divide it by 2 and you square it. So let me do that on the side. So you always take the coefficient of x and you divide it by 2. Always, no matter what. And that gives you negative 1. And in the next step, you always, no matter what, you just square it every single time, so you get 1. So you put a plus 1 here. And it's say, well, you can't do that. There's a 5. Ah, that's right. So how do we get to 5? Well, we need 4 more. <laughs> it's totally rigged, right? So basically, you break up the 5 into 1 plus 4. So you just take this number, divide it by 2 and square it, and then you put the result there. And you say, okay, what am I missing to get 5? Oh, I'm missing a 4. Now, this piece here has a name. This piece here is called a perfect square trinomial. It'll always factor every single time, like this parentheses x, parentheses 2. This 4 is still here. And so what goes here? Well, I just have this memorized. I know I keep the signed, so negative. And then just take this number and divide it by 2. So 2 over 2 is 1. Boom. That is beautiful. So now we can go ahead and rewrite our integral. So we have the definite integral from 1 to 3 of 1 over. And we have x minus 1 squared plus 4 dx. All right, let me scroll down. So there's a formula we can use for this. It's the arctan formula. I'm going to write it way down here so you see it. Recall if you have 1 over a squared plus x squared dx, this is equal to 1 over a arctangent of x over a plus our constant of integration capital C. Super important formula, right? It's absolutely worth memorizing, uh, not only uh, if you're you know, taking a class, but just for future classes. Uh, this is like one of those things in math. It's just worth knowing. So here you see a is going to be 2, because 2 squared is 4. So we do have to make a u sub, because here it's x, and then up here it's x minus 1. So let's do that. Let's let u equal to x minus 1, and then so du is dx. However, this is a definite integral, so technically we're supposed to change the limits of integration. So let's go ahead and do it. So when x is 1, that's the first one, that's the lower limit, you take the 1 and you plug it in here. So it'd be u equals 1 minus 1, so u equals 0. Beautiful stuff. And then you do the upper limit, so when x is 3, and again you just take the 3 and you just plug it in there, so u equals 3 minus 1, so u equals 2. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and completely rewrite our integral. Let me use a different color. Let's go back to this funky color here. I don't know what color this is, but it's, it's cool. I like it. So instead of 1, we have 0 now. So this becomes 0. And instead of 3, right, the 3 up top, it's going to become 2. And it'll become 1 over u squared because our x minus 1 was u, plus 2 squared. And then instead of dx, we have du. Wonderful. This is equal to, using the formula, 1 half arctangent of u over 2. And I'm really tempted to put a plus c, but we don't, because it is a definite integral. Oh, I love this stuff. So we go from 0 to 2. I feel like I'm running out of room here. I'm going to scroll down even more and just like skip to, 
to down here. So let's do that. So first you plug in the two. So I'll leave the one half. Oh, let's leave it there. Arc 10 of 2 over 2. You could have factored out the 1 half, but I'm being lazy. I'll just leave it 1 half, arc 10, 0 over 2. This is equal to, all right, let's see what's going on here. This is 1 half, arc 10 of 1, minus 1 half, arc 10 of 0. So you might say, whoa, how do you, how do, you do these, right? So I actually have these memorized. Um, if you wanted to work these out, like, for example, let's say you wanted to work this one out. The answer here is pi over 4, but let's say you didn't know that. If you wanted to work it out by hand, you would call it y. You would do something like this. You say, okay, y is arctan of 1. So the arctangent takes 1, it's a function, and sends it to y. So the tangent function is the inverse function. So it undoes that and takes y and sends it back to 1. Then this requires that you know the range of arctan, right? Because y equals arctan, so y is in the range. So y is in this interval here. It's just required memorization. You say, okay, what is the angle y that resides within this interval such that the tangent of y is equal to 1? Well, tangent is sine over cosine. So when are they the same between these numbers? Well, pi over 4. So y is pi over 4, right? Because the sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. So when you divide them, you get 1. And pi over 4 is certainly between these numbers. So just pure memorization. Eventually, you memorize it. Like, you do it enough times to where you, where you memorize it. Let's say that you don't have it memorized and you want to use your calculator. Well, if you put it in your calculator, if your calculator is in radians, which it should be, uh, it will give you uh, 0.785. You say, okay, what angle is that? So you just mess around with it and you realize that pi over 4 is approximately 0.785. So if you put this in your calculator, you get this. And then just play with it until you get the angle. I mean, that's a really cheesy way of doing it, but you really do want to have exact values here. You don't want to use decimals. Our tangent of 0 is 0, because the tangent of 0 is 0. So this is 0. You can work it out using the same argument. Actually, this one, your calculator will just give you. It'll just say 0. And this is pi over 8. A really, a really cheesy way to do this, by the way, is if you, um, if you put your calculator in degrees and you do arc 10 of 1, it'll give you 45 degrees. You say, okay, 45 degrees, that's pi over 4. So again, if you put your calculator in degrees momentarily, be careful, don't, don't leave it in degrees, and you put this in your calculator, it'll give you 45 degrees. And then what you can do is convert degrees to radians. So um, I'm, not, I'm not saying I recommend that. I think it's better to, to just know the math. I hope this video has been helpful.